You mean why does New England rule? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Ah! 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 Yeah, there's this project at Patakwe. Come on, man. It's uh, yeah, it. it's this pure, on, hard, beautiful line, crimps, big moves between you know bad holds, really tensiony, shouldery. I'm right behind you. I'm right behind you. Do come it. on, come on. Go. Come on. Nice. Real dude. crimpy, real powerful, shouldery, and uh, just really good rock. Yeah, come on. Just stick this thing, man. Get all over it kind of one of those really beautiful independent full lines oh, so like has a start has a finish on, has a middle has a crux like very oh, yeah. definitive it'll be one of the hardest in new england North Conway is definitely a mecca for climbing in the Northeast. It's, uh, the rock is uh, it's as good as anywhere. We don't have the, the biggest cliffs here compared to out west or other parts of the world, but what we do have is high quality granite.
The very first time I grabbed onto the rock at Cathedral Ledge, I felt like almost, you know, you could say like an electric connection. It, uh, Black. it was unlike anything that I had ever done. And um, something, about, something about it felt really good and, uh, and it felt like it was meant to be. Um, because for me this is all about adventure, there's no limit to where I can go with my climbing, there's no horizon. There's always going to be a new place to explore, the world is, is totally vast and uh, I feel like there's an unlimited supply of adventures waiting to be had in all the different corners of the world and also in all the little pockets of wilderness just around here. I think I'm kind of screwed up. I think um, this area of New England um, with the sea cliffs in Acadia to the variety of climbing that we have from sport routes and Rumney and Sundown to these classic long routes on Cannon Whitehorse, we fought hard to keep them. We fought hard to get access to them. We respected our elders. Um, we worked hard to uh, do the climbs that we could do. And what we couldn't do in good style, we left for another day. And the, and the other day was Jim Surratt coming along. And the other day was Dave Graham coming along, and, and now Tim Kempel with these really extreme roots. And uh, you know, there's, if you do it right, there's something for everybody. It's very hard to uh, put your finger on exactly why, why you climb, why I climb. I know different people probably do it for different reasons. I would say that I primarily climb because, because I think that it's, it's an exceptionally good way to seek out adventure in this world. Nice. <laughs> Trollville is a pretty rad place because it's it's pretty tiny compared to a lot of other crags, whether it be New England or around the country. But it definitely, you know, packs a punch. Everything there is steep, and you can't really let your guard down. Whether it be flakes that are going to crumble if you don't, you know, step on them just right, or just totally overhanging roots that once you start you're pumped until the end like Manchurians prime example you know you, you start out a couple different starts to it whether it's a you know the start to Guido's or it's straight up they're both fun and they challenge you but then once you get into the business 
it's a beautiful little pillar that goes into this corner that doesn't let up until you're actually off the route. Many of the moves are very tenuous and don't allow you to, to let off and really have to keep body tension in the right spot and your hooks have to be very precise and once you get them though you're pretty psyched especially when you get that final exit move. This area is, is a perfect training area for the climbs I've been doing in Alaska and I continually want to do because you get up there, you look around, and you see these big faces with both rock and ice and snow, and you just have confidence because you've been here, you've climbed on Cathedral Edge in full storms, you've climbed at Trollville on really hard conditions, you've climbed up in Washington in minus 30 degrees, and all those things are perfect training opportunities to go up to Alaska or to go anywhere in the world. I like climbing because it really, it brings out kind of the best in me. It forces me to be disciplined and committed to roots and other places in my life I can get pretty scattered, but in climbing, it brings you right into that focus, right into that moment, and it doesn't allow you to sway at all. like this like dropping your left knee yeah. getting your left hip to the wall and then just going like get it oh, wow The speed of life at Farley, the big ultimate boulder problem, the big 45 degree wall is something that one would imagine as a perfect problem if they like 45 degree walls and they like crimpers and they like to do big moves. So if somebody was like, oh man, the perfect problem in my mind would be a big 25 foot boulder problem 
with in-cut crimps spaced all the way up, sit-down start, rad mantle on perfect rock at the end, perfect line, that would be it. Uh, it exists, so it's there. Again, Dave, come on, you got it. It is something that I could never have possibly imagined for myself to have something like climbing. Like I couldn't have imagined what climbing would have been for me, but now that I have climbing in my life like it is now, it seems like it. if it wasn't there, there'd be some problems. Just because I have something to just put all of my energy and focus into, and uh, it really benefits me. And I've never found many things that really benefit you like climbing does when you really focus on it. So the kind of uh, things that I learn and I get out of all the aspects and all the parts of climbing in my life are like invaluable. To have something that you can really put your, your whole energy into, all of it, you know, just really go with something. What I see the younger generation doing is fantastic. I was only able to take it so far in my climbing, but today with, uh, with the footwear, with the training, with the, just the camaraderie of friends that these guys have, there's more of them climbing hard and they can push each other farther. I think we're seeing just stunning routes like China Beach and Ast Live in Astro that are you know, some of the most beautiful pieces of rock anywhere in the world. And uh, it's because of this, this kind of progression and growth and synthesis, if you will, of where climbing's gone. Basically, rock climbing to me is uh, just 
you know, a great way of like expression and you know, movement and challenge. And it's just every aspect of rock climbing I love. I love climbing in the cold, in the rain, hot, humid days, you know, just being out with my friends climbing, falling a lot, and you know, getting pissed and trying again. China Beach is uh, <clears throat> one of like the like the raddest routes like in the country I'd say you know I mean others have said the same and uh, it's just like up this big big belly of a wall it's just it, it's just unforgiving it's just like ah, I just got to keep going. The Adirondacks is a, is a really great place to visit as a climber. When you climb there, you feel like you're having much more of a, of a wilderness experience than you might be having other places. The park is huge. It's about the size of the state of New Hampshire. It's littered with granite cliffs, really, really beautiful granite cliffs. Um, and, and visiting there as a climber is, is kind of like stepping back in time in some ways. Moss Cliff is a, is a beautiful cliff and has some of the most beautiful crack lines that I've seen uh, in the Northeast, if not in the country. One of those lines is creation of the world. And when you walk up to the cliff, it's, it's one of the first things that really catches your eye and uh, sort of compels you to climb it. Um, it also turns out that it's quite an intimidating route. Um, when you first look at it, you think, man, I have to climb that thing. But, uh, you quickly realize that it's wide. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, that looks pretty fucking tasty, doesn't it? Some serious work. I think I need more coffee. What do you think of uh, the route? I think it's fucking killer. It's hard.
was fucking killer, dude. <sighs> Woo! Ah! Oh. The younger crowd here in New England, Dave Graham, Luke Parody, um, Joe, Tim Kempel, they've all got their own uh, thumbprint on a style. And what I see with the bouldering today that, that in particular Dave's able to do, he's able to take that to much longer sport routes and link together these heinous problems um, that are, you know, hundreds of feet long. And uh, on the, the conversely, a guy that I really respect is Tim Kempel because he's uh, taken the bouldering and applied that control and that everyday um, knowledge and ability of crimping on really small holds and he's able to run out very very difficult 512, 513 sections with minimal protection and that to me is that's a real um, progression in the sport. I think we decided we're going to call it absolute because of the absolute commitment involved. You just gotta go. That's why a lot of these climbs are, you just gotta go. You just get so focused that it's just you and you're climbing hard. You know, you grab this crimper, and you just really pretty challenging dyno to the slopey rail, and you cross over to this little dish, 
It's not very good. And your left hand grabs this really tiny intermediate and you smedge your left foot up. You usually like pull up and look at the hole and you knew you had to give this move 100% because if you blew it, you're gonna hit the ground. <laughs> so that's not something you wanted to be doing. Doing hard, scary climbs is, it, it just combines that mental and physical aspects. And that's why I climb, because for me, it's a mental and physical challenge. And hard, scary climbing is the epitome of that. And any other cli type of climbing, I think, kind of offers less in one area or another. There's a number of things that make this island special. Um, for that matter, the whole coast of Maine is, pr is pretty you know, unique. If you go from Kittery to Eastport, I mean, there's jewels along the whole coast, but this island is really a crown jewel, in my eyes anyway, compared to even the rest of the coast. And that's saying something. Um, and that's, there's a number of reasons, but probably if you had to distill it down to one reason, it's you know, the effect of the ocean. Greathead, for years, of course, didn't receive any attention at all, even after the Otter Cliffs and the South Wall and other areas on the island had been pretty well developed. But then about the mid-80s to late-80s, I came down and started looking at it a little closer and then wrapped in and said, you know, some of these things actually look like, you know, these flakes that look pretty friable actually are solid. 
So um, that's when I first started visiting the, the uh, cliff and started putting in some routes. One of the routes that struck my eye was a route I later called Transatlantic after a, a sailing trip I had taken and um, tried to free it as, as far as I could but could never eliminate one point of aid. There was always a, a, a spot early on in the, in the pitch that uh, stymied me. Um, so it just stood there for you know, all these years since, um, untouched. No one, as far as I knew, had even attempted to free that. Um, so today it was really neat to come with Tim and uh, you know, see what the new generation is doing because uh, he, he walked right up it basically. Uh, it was very impressive to see. It's really neat. I think it's really important that the new generation of climbers here in the Northeast has respect for the history of the area and of the people. I mean, people like Henry Barber and George Hurley were around years before I was even born, and they were doing crazy stuff with crazy equipment and crazy shoes. I mean, the stuff that those guys did was sick, and I have a lot of respect for what they did, and I think it's really important that the newer climbers have the same, the same respect. I mean, we wouldn't be where we were today if it wasn't for them. I think the reason that I've centered my life around climbing is because it's the one activity or aspect of my life that I've been able to improve with less gear, less encumbrances, less, the more I, the more I do, in fact, the less I have. Uh, so stripped away, um, it's the purest thing that you could do. It's like walking, except that you're more involved with the environment, you're more involved with the surface, you're more involved with the elements. back down and reach again. <laughs> <Get it out. laughs>
can still climb. Yeah, you can. It's amazing. Everything feels wet. New England style. Can I help wet too? Yeah. Cool, we have a whole like pit squad. Like we're Air all like squad. doing things to like keep the boulder dry. Like it's total New England climbing. That's what you don't get with other climbing areas. Good, Dave. Come on. Come on, Dave. Come on. Come on. Come on. Dude, try hard. Come on. Come on. Good. Come on, Dave. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get it, dude. Oh, no. Get it. Oh, my right hand is all wet. Come on. Oh, no. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on. Nice. Come on, Dave. Nice, dude. Come on, Dave. Come on, man. Come on. Nice. Nice. Come on. Come on, dude. You're in. You're in. You're in. Come on, Dave. Get it. Got it. You got it. Hold it. Come on, Dave. It's a good song. Word. Laying on the rail. Come on. It's a fine, fine day. I tell you, cause I think it's so. It's a good on, life. Come on, Dave. It comes upon you now and then. And I tell you, tell you, tell you, tell you, tell you, cause I tell you, cause I think it's so. Cause I think it's so. Woo! Was walking down the hill beside the town in which I Nice-filled glasses giving way to the evening mm -hmm. This is what I It's a good song. It's a good song. It's a bad Who's Henry Barber? <laughs> you don't know who Henry Barber is? No! No! Who the hell is that? <laughs> I'll introduce you. What about Joe? Do you know, you know that guy, Edmund Hillary? No. Is that like the British guy that's sort of Edmund Hillary dude? Does he live around here? <laughs> is he like, is he from New England? No. He's from, he's from Britain. Well, why would I know him, man? <laughs> <laughs> what about Who is Ryan, that? Messner. No. <laughs> Who's Warren that, Harding? dude? Huh? Warren Harding? No. Is he from the East? <laughs> <laughs> I, said, I don't know. I may have heard that name before. <laughs> <laughs> Joe who? <laughs> <laughs> it's a fine, fine day. I tell you, cause I think it's so. It's a good life It comes upon you now and then And I tell you, tell you, tell you, tell you, tell you Cause I tell you, cause I'm playing so It's a good life It's a good song It's a fine, fine day It's a good life It's a good song It's a fine, fine day 
It's a good song Laying on the rain 